Well, good morning this morning. It's great to see you. Good to have you here with me in our live daily devotional, the new happy hour. Amen. <laughs> I really love using that term happy hour. <laughs> but we serve a good God and he is faithful. He is faithful and he is forever by your side and he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Lord, place around us the blood of the Lamb, shield of protection. Guard our heart, soul, our body, our mind, and our spirit and let nothing but your love penetrate that blood of the Lamb, shield of protection in the name of Jesus Christ. Place on us the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness, the belt buckle of truth, shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace of Jesus Christ. Place in our hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, sharper than any two double-edged sword. Place in our other hand the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom. It's the power and the glory forever. Good morning, Carmine. It's good to see you guys here this morning. Father, you are forever faithful, and I, I, I'm so grateful to be your daughter, the daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you for every person that is touched by this message. Lord, that you would bless them with your presence this morning and teach them an understanding about your word in a way that I'm really not able to do. You guys know I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm just here uh, praying with you, declaring God's promises and reading his word. And that is why I'm here. So take me out of the equation because I'm, I'm a vessel being used to wash you in the water of the word, and God is good. Steve Hillstein's in the house this morning. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, Steve just announced this morning, it's official, he has moved, he sold his home, and he moved. So congratulations, I'm so proud of you. It's been a, I know it's been a, um, a journey, <laughs> quite the adventure, and um, it's a good new start for you, and I'm so happy for you. So congratulations, Steve, on your recent move, real recent. And Peter Price is in the house. Good morning. Good to have you here this morning, Peter. You're like, who is that lady in red? Well, I am washed by the blood of the lamb. <laughs> and the red shirt is significant of that. It, it's... it's um, reminding me this morning that I am washed in the water of the word. And I was thinking this morning, gosh, I wish, I wish sometimes my life was, was like, uh, written in chalk, you know, here, here's a piece of chalk. I wish it was written in chalk that I could just <laughs> erase some things, but I can't, but Jesus can. Amen. Every day you can come to him and not that you, not that we're intentionally coming, uh, sinning every day and then coming to him to, to be washed clean. But you know what I mean. He can, he can start you all over again. He can give you a restart anytime. <laughs> we're going to start. Did you know that your Bible is a daily devotional? There are, there are 31 Proverbs in the Bible and the Proverbs teach all kinds of wisdom and knowledge about, about how we should, how we should um, live our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. So today we're going to start in Proverb 24, now that we've prayed. And we'll more than likely do some more praying this morning. But let's start out in the Old Testament, Proverbs 24. Do not be envious of evil men, nor desire to be with them, for their heart devises violence, and their lips talk of troublemaking. 
Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength, for by wise counsel you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of counselors there is safety. Be careful who you talk to, though. <laughs> and for goodness sakes, guard your heart, for out of it flow, flow the issues of life. Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate. He who plots to do evil will be called a schemer. The devising of foolishness is sin, and a scoffer is an abomination to men. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Deliver those who are drawn toward death, and hold back those stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, surely we did not know this, does he who weighs the hearts consider it? See, God weighs the heart. He knows the intentions of your heart, and we talked about that the other day. Amen. He, could, he who keeps your soul, does he not know? Does he not know it? And will he not render to each man according to his deeds? Who is the great judge? He is the great judge, and on Judgment Day, he will, he will be the one to, to render each man to according to his own deeds. How are you living your life today? We're in a spiritual battle, guys. This is a battle between good and evil, and God is the good guy, and Satan is the bad guy. Be careful of who you're aligning yourself with today. There are many, many false teachers, and you want to measure, measure by the word of God. What does God's word say about this or that, right? My son, eat honey because it is good, and the honeycomb, which is sweet to your taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. If you have found it, there is a prospect and your hope will not be cut off. Do not lie in wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not plunder his resting place. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Lord knows I've fallen more than once, more than seven times. <laughs> the Lord knows that. And he has great mercy, grace. His unmerited favor on us. Do not lie in wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not plunder his resting place, for a righteous man may fall seven times, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles, lest the Lord see it, and it displease, displeases him. And he turn away his wrath from him. Do not fret because of evil doer, doers, nor be envious of the wicked, for they there will be no prospect for the evil man. Guys, let's just bind the spirit of infirmity in Jesus' name and loose from heaven health and prosperity. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I'm having a migraine headache this morning. <laughs> and I've just been trying to force my way through it and... Praise the Lord. He's bring, here bringing his healing touch to me. Thank you, Lord, for healing me, oh God. Yes, Lord, thank you for your healing touch this morning and, and for binding that spirit of infirmity or spirit of sickness in Jesus' name. Thank you for washing me in the water of the word and the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Lord. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the king. Do not associate with those given to change, for their calamity will rise suddenly, and who knows the ruin those two can bring. It is not good to show partiality in judgment. He who say, says to the wicked, you are righteous, him the people will curse, nations will abhor him, but those who rebuke the wicked will have delight, and a good blessing will come upon them. He who gives a right answer kisses the lips, Prepare your outside work, make it fit for yourself in the field, and afterward build your house. Do not be a witness against your neighbor without cause. 
For would you deceive with your lips? Do not say I will do to him just as he has done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. I went by the field of the lazy man and by the vineyard of the man, devoid of understanding, and there it was, all overgrown with thorns. Its surface was covered with nettles. Its stone wall was broken down. When I saw it, I considered it well. I looked on it and received instruction, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler and your need like an armed man. Oh, let's get to work. <laughs> Lord knows I've been working. Thank you, Father, for your healing touch this morning. I just want to pray for anyone who has a migraine headache now or who has a history of migraine headaches. Um, I get two kinds of migraine headache. Uh, I have gotten them. And one of them is an acephalgic migraine. It is a stroke-like migraine where you get stroke-like symptoms. And it can really, it can really cause some harm for me. It really gets me all caught up. So I pray, Father God, right now for your healing touch and your grace, Lord. Oh, Lord, come and just, um, yes, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my prayerful friends who are listening today, watching and, and praying for me this morning. Let's just press in. I also know that there were some word curses spoken about me this morning. I felt it in the spirit. And um, uh, let's see what the, I'm, I was going to say the initials, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, there's there's someone spewing out some word curses about me this morning. And well, that's okay, because I know the truth and, and God is good. And I only know this in the spirit, by the way. So if you're wondering, hmm, I, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. We're going to be reading in the New Testament, um, Philippians. So turn with me to the New Testament, and right after Ephesians is Philippians. Yes, indeed, and we're going to start in chapter 2 this morning, and praise God. God is good. God is good. You are good, Father God. You are the great physician, and I believe that you are healing me as I speak, Lord. As I speak your word, you are washing me and cleansing me, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Wow, that's speaking to me this morning. I've got a new, a new project thing thingy on my mind. So this word is talking to me this morning. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Or let this mind man. See, that's my migraine. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Jesus is a man. Jesus is also God. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God had also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, 
For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. He is good. Amen. Good God. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Ah, this is a crooked and perverse generation. My goodness. <laughs> My goodness. Among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, which is the word of God so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Yes, and if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason, you also be glad and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly so that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father he served with me in the gospel. Therefore I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Yet I considered it necessary to send you to Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick, for indeed he was sick almost unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I sent him the more eagerly, that when you see him again you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such men esteem, because for the work of Christ he came close to death, not regarding his life, to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. Now all for Christ. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. It is safety. This word of God that is sharper than any two double-edged sword is your greatest protection and your greatest form of your greatest weapon in the stormies in all times for all all times and it gives the bible gives you warnings of things and and wisdom and knowledge and through reading it um, by the power of the holy spirit lord i pray that you would give us understanding about your word this morning Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. Hey, guess where that comes from? The beware of dog sign. <laughs> For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews concerning the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me? These I have counted for loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. Therefore, you know, you know what I love? I love it when you're, when you're calling on, on Siri, um, to give you directions and you finally get to your destination. And what does Siri say? You have arrived. 
I love hearing that because I know it's that's not really true. We're never really going to arrive until we we get to eternity, right? <laughs> but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, we have a good God. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the one same mind. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have for us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things himself. Therefore, my beloved and longed-for brethren, my joy and crowned, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved in Philippians 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, I mentioned this uh, Tuesday, this verse. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you. Guys, I, um, <laughs> I'm having a really bad migraine headache. I'm going to cut it short here, but I want to tell you something. It's interesting. I was... I was explaining to a friend of mine how my daughter, Jessica Jewell, is starting her own company. I'm so proud of her. She's just amazing. She's really, she's like an animal, <laughs> a lion. I pick a lioness. And uh, I was explaining to a friend how my daughter's starting her new company, you know, her new business. And the, the friend uh, started chiming in on, um, oh yeah, you know, uh, all about uh, businesses going bankrupt and failing. And I looked her point blank in the face and I said, my goodness, she hasn't even started this business yet. The the attorney's barely drawing up the LLC, and you're you're you've already damned her to to bankruptcy. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? No. Think on think on those things that we just talked about. Think on those things because um, you speak life or death. You speak life or death with your tongue, and it's in Proverbs 18, 21. So you want to speak life, not death, over you. You want to speak life, not death, over your children, over your grandchildren. You want to speak life, and that, my friends, is the message for today. Thank you for continuing to pray for me through this migraine headache. I will get rid of it very soon. God is a good God. He is faithful and he is a healer, Jehovah Rapha, the great physician. And I bless your Thursday and I bless your whole entire day that you would go out and be hands and feet, be his hands and feet and bless your family, your neighbors and 
your friends on Facebook. Do something kind. Do a random act of kindness today. Okay. God loves you. I love you. God bless you. See you Friday, tomorrow.